5.30 a.m. and I don't really want to get up, but I must, because I'm a platypus stalker. For two years I've been watching and waiting for two platypus to reappear on my property. It's become quite an obsession. Being a persistent platypus peeper started to pay off about a week ago. I'm doing my usual morning walk around the property and notice ripples on the water. I'm always curious when I see ripples because lots of interesting creatures can make them. This creek is home to hundreds of water dragons, a family of water hens, a stunning Asia kingfisher, and water boatmen, insects which live on top of the water. But the ripples I see on this occasion are very persistent. This is extremely exciting because it is very possible a platypus is the culprit. And sure enough, I catch a glimpse of a platypus. I start to photograph what I think is a male. Platypus are one of the weirdest creatures on the planet. They are monotremes, which are mammals that lay eggs and suckle their young. The only other monotreme in the world is the echidna. I recently spotted this one, hunting for ants on the bank above the creek. A day later I spot the male again. This time he has a friend, a smaller and shyer female platypus. The male swims around and hides at the edge of the creek and then pounces on the female, just like two cats playing. I shadow them for over an hour. I realise now that what I was seeing was their courtship dance. They were mating. The challenge today is to get a good look at these guys on video, but I suspect that's not going to be easy. Most days when I come down, I just manage to hear the platypus as it disappears under the water. I try the top pond first. Not a ripple. There's a ripple over there. There it is. Damn. Missed it again. Now I've got it. No, it's down again. They'll come to the surface where you least expect them to. They'll stay on the surface for only a second or two. I've got endless pictures of just the backside of a platypus disappearing under the water. And now they've vanished altogether. I'll try downstream. I've noticed that they tend to move from pond to pond in looking for food. There's a ripple over there. That's a really good view of the platypus. That's the male. He's about 40 centimetres long. And he's going upstream. There's another one. That must be the female. She's a bit smaller and not quite as confident as the male. She moves upstream and I follow her. I find her in a much shallower pool in the shadows and she's fishing. Oh, and there's an eel. There's quite a big eel too. Female platypus dives and scuffles around in the mud with her bill to see if she can find any yabbies or small crustaceans. She closes her eyes and ears when she goes underwater. So she just relies on electrical currents which she detects with her bill. And then she catches the yabbies and she eats them and she's devouring heaps today. I can't help wondering if it's because she's pregnant. She finally has her fill and disappears. So I head down the creek to find the male again. I'm at his favourite spot. And there he is. He's so cute.
checking to see that everything's clear before he goes downstream. He seems to be on a mission. There he goes. It's 10 a.m. and I think it's pretty well bedtime for platypuses. Don't think I'll see him again today. But I can't complain. It's been a pretty good morning for a platypus stalker.